When we were kids, today was the future. And while science fiction authors wrote of dystopian futures in which facts were in dispute and reality was warped by the government of the day, rarely did we learn how those worlds came to be. Could it be social media is what drove these Orwellian futures of doublespeak? Where's my jetpack? The technology we were promised as kids. What we got and what's coming next. Here is Michael Hainsworth. Meet Stuart Reynolds, also known as Brittlestar. The last decade, the internet's favorite dad has been posting heartwarming videos meant to brighten your social timeline. But the tone of his content has evolved since his early days on the Vine short form social video site, and particularly during the Corona apocalypse. We'll find out why and what the future holds for social media services run by right wing billionaires like Elon Musk and Kanye West. It's also foolhardy, and I, I mean, running a social media platform is a lot harder than some of these guys think. But first, take a look at this. So Elon Musk is buying Twitter after all, and surprise, surprise, after all his bluster about bots bringing down the true value of the company, there's no discount to take into account for fake accounts. No breakup fee to be paid to walk away. At $44 billion, the billionaire shit poster who accuses an innocent expert of being a pedophile wades into geopolitics with the understanding of a teenage Wikipedia reader and proclaims kids essentially immune to COVID is paying full price for Twitter. And he's not the only one who will be paying full price. So will we. If you thought Twitter was a dumpster fire already, your drunk uncle and Aunt Karen are about to get more obnoxious this Christmas. The self-proclaimed free speech absolutist says he's bringing Donald Trump back to Twitter. But here's the thing. You can make Twitter an alt-right, lunatic-free social media service. A safe space, if you will, for the 66% of us who are not trying to bend reality to suit our petty world view. There's some things you can do to save yourself from throwing your phone at the wall in frustration. One, switch your timeline view from home to latest tweets. This means you'll largely bypass the algorithm that has your blood boiling. You only see the tweets of those you follow. Two, filter your feed of emojis. They speak to the crazy train's vocabulary level. Go into your security settings and add these to your mute and block list. Your national flag, because they think they own patriotism. Poop, for obvious reasons. Snowflake, because they're not using it ironically. And my favorite, clown. The alt-right loves to call sane people clowns, which is weird since their leader loves orange makeup. And three, don't feed the trolls. Don't reply to them. Don't read the comments. Block them when they crawl out from under their rocks. Musk claims he has Asperger's, but while the syndrome is characterized as having difficulties in social interaction, it's more likely the social network will be owned by a billionaire asshole who thinks hate speech and threats of violence are the price we have to pay for him to speak his mind. And if these tips don't make your Twitter experience better, do what thousands of future Musk employees are expected to do when the alt-right's edgelord takes over. Walk away and don't look back. My bigger concern is that the polarization amplified by social media will accelerate the decline and fall of Western civilization. Yeah, that. We see evidence of it everywhere. The far right started their own social media networks because the rest of us looked at their vitriol and anger and lies and showed them the door. Now sites like Parler and Truth Social are being used to organize violent responses to society's attempts at being kinder and gentler to the victims of abuse, systemic racism, and neglect. It's like that scene from The Family Guy titled 2020 Christmas Decorations. All right, time to put up the 2020 Christmas decorations. First, ethnically accurate Jesus goes right here next to Father Mary and Mother Josephine, followed closely by the three genderless wise people on their bird scooters, Tig Notaro for some reason, and of course, the little drummer them. Because God forbid we call a boy a boy. Dad, what are you saying? I don't like what the world is. I'm white. When's it going to be our turn? But not everyone's convinced we're doomed. Stuart Reynolds, a.k.a. Brittle Star, the Internet's favorite dad, believes there's reason for hope. His content has pivoted from the feel-good comedy to the give-your-head-a-shake type bits about COVID restrictions and the far right, but with a gentle touch. People throughout this past couple of years would say to me, you're so brave doing what you're doing. It's like, brave? Why am I brave? I'm out here in the suburbs. I get my shots and 
I, I work from home. I get my beer delivered to my porch. What do I have to worry about? I'm not being brave. I'm just saying like, look, here's the situation. Just let's help each other through it. And yeah, I mean, it's, it just, it became less politics to me and more a case of good and bad. Let's just, let's work together to, to work for the good because it, it impacts society and that will eventually impact me. And I want to live in a good society so that I can just enjoy my life and all the perks that go with it. The far right is no longer just your uneducated, useful idiots. It's also made up of useful idiot billionaires. Elon Musk parroting his Vladimir Putin talking points. He's buying Twitter. And Kanye West is mused about buying Parler. But Reynolds believes both these men are going to find it easier to run their mouths than it is to run a social media network. It's really frustrating when you have those types of people do really terrible things like his anti-Semitic comments. It's like, I can't do it. I can't. I can't get behind you anymore, and I would love to be able to get behind you, but I can't. I just you've you've gone over the line numerous, numerous times. We were talking about this as a family, actually, because we have family meetings about Kanye West, um, <laughs> as every white suburban family does. And uh, we were talking about how talented he is and stuff. And uh, my one son said, "You know, people are saying this is the line. This with his anti-Semitic comments, That's, he's crossed the line." But he's crossed the line numerous times before and somehow, you know, his his art, I'm air quoting again for those listening, uh, sort of overshadows his stupidity. Um, will that happen now? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's right and I don't think it's good and I don't think it's healthy for uh, us to just let that kind of stuff slide. So where is the hope? Reynolds thinks this hyper-partisanism and anonymous venom spewing that's turned sites like Twitter, Facebook, Parler, and Truth Social into dumpster fires of disinformation and lies may be generational. Boomers are four times more likely to share fake news than the kids today. And Gen X isn't immune to spittle spewing, but he says Gen Y is. I think people are starting to realize that that anonymity online is dwindling and it's it's getting it's less less and less value first of all because we just call those people bots. I mean that's the that's the first step is we've dehumanized <laughs> right. them right away. Like we just it, like some stupid comment hot take and you're like it's, it's, you're a bot. Yeah, as soon as you see a username with 12 characters and yeah. numbers after it you're like how and they joined 6 months ago. Yeah. How likely is it that this is a real human being? Yeah, and I think that devalues their comments. I think that that uh, you know makes them seem less valuable, their opinion less valuable, and that notion that we will just kind of filter those things out in the same way that we can go into a, a, a noisy room and talk to each other, and I can hear your voice, even though there's a million other voices happening in the room, I can hear your voice. Um, it's because I'm focusing and I'm perceiving you. I've chosen to focus in on you, and I think that'll happen online and social media too. So what is the future of social media? A world where the drunk uncles and Aunt Karens are ignored and dismissed as bots. Where the next generation distrusts the anonymity that allows for the language that would get you fired from your job. So if it doesn't evolve, it dies along with the generations that fuel the hate and ignorance that epitomize social media today. I'm Michael Hainsworth. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit the subscribe and like button. Yes, it does help tremendously. If you caught this on Twitter, a retweet would be awesome. And if you saw this on Truth Social, what the hell is that about? Amber Healy has a fantastic look back at the origins of social media and its Morse code roots at wheresmyjetpack.ca. Watch Where's My Jetpack on YouTube or subscribe wherever fine podcasts are found. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram and learn more about today's topic with insightful articles by Amber Healy or by visiting wheresmyjetpack.ca.